Good afternoon, everyone. It's Reverend Charles Ulick from Grace Episcopal Church, and it's our noonday service in this Easter season. It is so great to be back with you again as we celebrate this Easter season. I'm sorry I was taking the Easter octave off uh, because of uh, several funerals that we had here at Grace Church, but also for uh, some time off as well. Unfortunately, I didn't get that. But I'm standing here today on this uh, 13th day of April, celebrating our noonday prayer in front of this beautiful pink dogwood tree and this beautiful cross that stands behind me in, me in memory of the Right Reverend Clinton Quinn, who was rector and pastor here from 1911 to 1917 and then made coadjutor bishop of Texas and then bishop as well from 1918 to 1955. Let us put ourselves in God's holy presence as we celebrate this beautiful day. We begin our service on page 103 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 103. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today is Psalm 11, found on page 596 in your Book of Common Prayer, also found in your Holy Scriptures as well. Psalm 11. Together let us recite this beautiful psalm together, or in the silence of your own meditation. In the, law, in the Lord I have I taken refuge. How can you say to me, fly away like a bird to the hilltop? For see how the wicked bend the bow and fit their arrows to the string to shoot from ambush at the truth, true of heart. When the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is his heaven. His eyes behold the inhabited world. His piercing eyes weigh our, our worth. The Lord weighs the righteous as well as the wicked, but those who delight in violence he abhors. Upon the wicked he shall rain coals of fire and burn sulfur. A scorching wind shall be their lot. For the Lord is righteous, he delights in righteous deeds, and the just shall see his face. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Today our scriptures continue with a passage from John's Gospel, chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, as a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who, came, who has come from God, for no one can do the signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. And what is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from, where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, as I was reflecting on this passage today, I was reminded of a story about George Foreman, the famous heavyweight boxer. He was attending Bible classes, and during his classes, he wasn't seeming to getting anything out of it other than the academic work of reading scripture. But then, he, after a fight, and his, he was lay, sitting in his locker room, 
he started to bleed from his forehead and the blood was dripping on through his hands and through his onto his feet and then he realized that Jesus gave to him the salvation that he needed he had a spiritual awakening you know many of us have had those types of experiences where all of a sudden we realize and put all the scripture together and our knowledge of our faith in action and we realize that it is a very personal thing a spiritual awakening that increases and strengthens our faith just like George Foreman in his own awakening many of us in this Easter season can still have those po those possibilities of spiritual awakening and I believe many of you have God has directed us to knowing him as the resurrection and the life may we have a, a great awakening a spiritual awakening that knows God even more personally that is a spiritual rebirth amen let us now continue our prayers we turn now to page 106 in your book of common prayer page 106 Lord have mercy Christ have mercy Lord have mercy and together my sisters and brothers let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us let us use the traditional Lord's Prayer on the left column on the bottom of page 106 our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil Lord hear our prayer and let our cry come to you let us pray this is our colic prayer for this week almighty and everlasting God who in the paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives and profess their by their faith through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever amen and now my sisters and brothers let us now continue our prayers let us lift up our prayers by turning to page 387 in your book of common prayer page 387 prayers of the people form three Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. We pray, Lord, in thanksgiving for the universal Christian faith. In all we pray for our brothers and sisters of faith here in the downtown area, our Presbyterian, Methodist, Catholic, Roman Catholic, Baptist. We pray, O oh God, for all the blessings of the Christian faith, that we may all be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially as we remember today Clinton Quinn, previous rector and bishop of the Episcopal Church. We thank you, Lord, for his service and for all the clergy's service, especially as we celebrate this Easter season, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that, they may, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. We give thanks, O God, for all those who are celebrating a birthday or wedding anniversary this week. We especially pray and remember Julian Desmukes and Andrew Payne as they celebrate their birthdays. Little Andrew, who celebrated his on the 11th, and yesterday Julian Desmukes as well and so we celebrate these beautiful lives and those special in your life and whoever you might be thinking of and who is special you're welcome to also post a, a prayer online and we'll look at that and offer that in prayer after I'm done and we lift up all those special people 
that our works may, fa may find favor in your sight. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. We pray, O oh Lord God, for all those who are suffering from COVID-19. We give thanks, Lord, that COVID-19 is decreasing in our commonwealth and hopefully wherever you might be living as well. We pray, Lord, for the blessing of the vaccinations that are going on, and especially, Lord, for the reopening of all, many of our businesses and clergy and who are in their churches. We give thanks, Lord, and ask your blessing and your healing touch on all those who are feeling ill this day, especially my nephew, John Ulick, my wife, Susie, who's still suffering from frozen shoulder, for Reverend John Allen, Teresa Wilson, Liz Story, and the Reverend Nick Yeager. We pray for all those at River Crest, the Lakes, and Gaither Suites Assisted Living, and for the Episcopal Church Homes in Louisville, for Parkview and Heritage Manor nursing facilities, and all those who are doing rehabilitation there. We pray, Lord, for all of our doctors and nurses who are caring for all these people, and especially those residents. I'd like to pray for all those suffering from cancer at this time, especially my sister-in-law, Sherry Ulick, for Reverend Libby Wade, Reverend Dorothy Hartzog, Kelly Curtis Walker, for Tommy, for Sam Wittes, for Patty and Phil. We give thanks, O Heavenly Father, for your blessing, for their care that they're receiving. And we lift up all those who are suffering the day from behavioral health issues. We ask your blessing for those counselors and therapists who are caring for them. We lift up all of them that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. We especially pray for the seven people who died yesterday from COVID-19 here in our Commonwealth. I'd like to remember especially Jim Zelmer, who will be having his burial service tomorrow at 11 a.m. and for his wife, Elaine, and for all his family. We pray for Darlene Pigford and her family as she uh, is cared for and brought to your heavenly kingdom, Lord. And as for this Saturday, we remember Roger Kellner and his daughter, Rogine Stone. We ask you, Lord, to be with all these family members and all those who have lost a loved one this week and for all those we care for and we remember and pause for a moment and remember them at this time. Let light perpetually shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. And again, we lift up all those prayers that are posted online. And for those people we'd like to remember and cherish and ask for your healing touch and to be with them at this time. And so we pray. Lord, hear the prayers of thy people, and what we have asked faithfully grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of thy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon, and remember that uh, we'll be uh, celebrating uh, uh, Jim Zelmer's burial service tomorrow at 11 a.m. So there, we won't have a noonday service for Holy Eucharist tomorrow, unfortunately. But please join me on Thursday and Friday of this week for our noonday prayer services as we continue this Easter, uh, Easter season and have a beautiful and wonderful day. Remember, God loves each and every one of you, and so do I. Have a blessed and wonderful afternoon.